Zeb-tebi. And some people call it Zeb-tebi. But I prefer Zeb-tebi. Zeb-tebi, the first time. First time of what? They call this story at the story of creation. And most of the people immediately will think this is the creation of mankind. No, my friend, this is the creation of the whole universe. The ancient Egyptians were like exceeding our expectations in a, in a huge level. They were talking about how the universe was created. And I always say that having this symbols here, like this one here in the middle, can you see it? The circle. I see it like the, uh, the atom and all the electrons inside the atom. Also the head representing the consciousness and the desire or the will. Okay. The long two pieces like, like the lock or like, uh, I don't know how to call it, that design. If you are familiar of what they call it, the Dandara light bulbs, have you heard about that? The two big shapes, they call it bulbs, which I don't agree with. I call it the, uh, also it's a design, we call it the, um, I forget the word, okay, but it is the powers. Yes, that is the, the Big Bang story. That is the story of creation also under Dandara temple you will see that someone is holding this huge design and another one and facing him holding the same design, but they are not touching each other. So that is the moment before creation. Here in the picture, they are touching each other because creation happened or that spark started, okay? And we have the two strokes also to represent about duality. So no creation, no beginning for individual or using individual power. It must be two powers. The yin and yang, male, female, positive, negative. So these are all words to explain that we have two. Not necessarily one better, one less, one high. No, it is, so that is expression that we must have two powers. Without the two, we don't have any effect. So that creation, that story was created where or who was the, uh, the one who told us the story, the priest of On. On, that is the name of our city, which called by the Greeks later Heliopolis, the city of the sun, okay? Because that city existed before what we call it the ancient Egyptian civilization. There are so many capitals for ancient Egypt, and fam the most famous one is Memphis, Luxor, and later Cairo, Alexandria. And we have so many capitals, most of the people don't know about it, like Isid Tawi, only academics who know about those uh, capitals, because they didn't last for more than 50 years, 100 years. But what I can tell you that hundreds of those capitals, we know who built them, how, why, where, all the details, but not all. We don't know anything about all. We know that like anything before the dynasties. But during the dynasties, we know the location of own, the powers of own, the importance of own. But who designed own, who built own, who used own for the first time? We don't know anything. Okay. And even the shape of, of the city is very interesting. It seems like again the symbol city means very high civilization. That kind of jar, we always see it in the Egyptian carvings, and we call it the Nu jar. And that Nu jar, they claim sometimes that it, ho it contains milk, contains wine, maybe sacred water, which is not true. According to the writings I can read, it contains magical liquid. Magical liquid. And again, when we use the same system, I just said about being science became religion. So magical could be strong chemical liquid, okay? Because what is magic is science. But we think, because we don't know what is going on, so we call it magic. And this design of a tower, I see it as an obelisk covered with another design. 
So that is now the story, we call it the Inyad of Heliopolis. The word Inyad means nine figures or nine personalities. They say before creation, there was what we call it primordial water. And that picture is not very accurate because that water is supposed to be silent water, no movement. But I couldn't have a picture for silent water. Every time I go, there was wind. So, I have, so that is considered the picture number two. So now you imagine the picture number one is silent water. No single movement. Okay? And the ancient Egyptians called this ocean, according to academics, they call it noon. No, I, because remember I said what? There is no vowels. So it is N and N. Okay? So is there an English word means nothing? Can be from N and N? None. Exactly. So it is not noon. It is none. Nothing. So that is none ocean. So after the vibrations, it then became very strong vibrations, a small island came from the bottom to the top, and that island had the shape of a pyramid. And I made this, this is the exact shape of a pyramid. When, we, when you draw a pyramid from now on, don't just do a triangle. You must do the rectangular base underneath. Okay, without this base, it will be a triangle like any other triangle. But with the base, that is means pyramid. What is this base? This is uh, a design surrounding the pyramid. And who came to Egypt and who will come to Egypt, they will see that kind of platform surrounding the pyramid. It is very important. Atom created himself, or he was created, and he was standing at the top of the pyramid. And the word atom can be explained as Adam, because T also is replaced by D. How I know? We have the famous name Cleopatra. For, for some people will say our queen Cleopatra. She was, yes, the Egyptian queen. But Cleopatra, by the way, she is not pure Egyptian. She was half Greek, or almost Greek, and few Egyptians. Cleopatra was not pure Egyptian uh, citizen. Her family are Greek family. So Cleopatra, her name was written in many temples like Isis Temple, Kilobadra was D, not T. And other Roman rulers, their names start or have T in the middle, written with D. So I can say Atom is Adam. But wait a minute, I just said we are not talking about human level yet. This is the cosmic level. So atom is the atom. Okay? So it, that is not uh, a, a chance to change the name. So we are talking about now the atomic power. And atom is the representation of this kind of beginning of creation. That is the table. Atom, according to the story from a, a child's style, okay, because I don't know who they were targeting with the story, because that story written on papyrus, he sneezed. He said, Hachu, so he created Chu. <laughs> <laughs> and then he spit it. And the word spit in Arabic language and ancient Egyptian means taf, yitif. Like spit is tif. So he created tifnut. Tifnut. So atom, one atom, and then two atoms, and then will be four, and then the story of creation will start. And they say Shu and Tifnut get married, and by the way, Tifnut looks like Sekhmet, if some of you are aware with Sekhmet, the other lioness style or shape. Tifnut is a copy from Sekhmet, but we shall say the opposite. Sekhmet is a copy of Tifnut. Tifnut is the, the, the grandmother. Sekhmet is a mother. If not, the grand mother. Both of them were represented as two sphinxes. We call them the roti. So Tifnut is a sphinx, and Shu is a sphinx. And they were always represented like two lines, recumbent lines, next to each other. They get married, and they had Gib and Nut. Gib, earth, Nut, sky. Did you realize something? We said Gib, earth. So the only nation said Father Earth are the ancient Egyptians, not Mother Earth. But there is a kind of significance. We are not talking maybe about 
the energy of Earth itself may be the surface. So Gib is Earth and Nut is sky. And I want you to learn something. Any uh, word ends with T in the Egyptian language means feminine. If you close your eyes and you hear any word with T at the end, it means feminine. The only exception is Hatur or Hathur. That is the only exception. There is no T at the end. But all of them have, must have T. And this is the feminine sign of ancient Egyptian language. They get married, Geb and Nut, and they had births of two lovely girls and two boys, Neftis, Set, Isis, Osiris. But let's go back. It seemed that Shu, Tifnut, before they get married, they had the permission of Atum. But Geb and Nut, they were in a hurry, don't know why. They didn't get the permission. So Atom was angry of them, especially after he knew that Nut is pregnant. So he told Nut, look Nut, I love you, you're my child, but the whole year is mine. I own the year. How many days that year? 360 days. He said, you cannot, I don't give you permission to have birth in any day of my days. So Nut was like, what I'm going to do? That is like, so uh, Bitah, who just jumped in the story, we don't know the origin of Bitah, like what happened, we just are following a regular sequence, okay? Supposed to be uh, very controlled, but then Bitah occupied or invaded the story as if he was already there from the beginning, okay? He, when the universe wasn't created, Bitah was already there. So Bitah told, uh, Isis uh, told uh, Nut, don't worry, I'm going to create five magical days for you. And you can have your delivery on those days. So the Egyptian solar year became 365 days. And she received Neftis or Nephet, Set. And this is also another exception. This is the only word with T, but it means a man or a, fee or a male. And then Isis and Osiris. Twin, first, uh, Set and Isis together, and then Uzir, or Osiris, and Neftis together. That's why there was a law that the two twin together cannot marry each other. They must switch. So Osiris married Isis, and Set married Neftis. Set complained. He said, no, I don't like this deal. That is not right deal. Why? Uh, in a kind of um, a nice way for tour guides and Egyptologists, they talk about that Isis was more beautiful, uh, nicer. That is, of course, not correct. Because if you look above the head of Isis, you can see what the chair. That is a chair symbol or the throne symbol. The head, above the head of Neftis, is a gate shape, like a door gate from the ancient style or the old style of gates. So who will marry Isis will sit on the throne, will, be, will have the physical power, will control, will become the ruler. Who will marry or will be connected with Neftis? He will cross the gate. He will leave this dimension. Like in this whole room now, if someone will cross the gate, he will not be with us anymore. So Seth was smart. He understood what is going to happen. He didn't want to leave this community. But what was written was destiny and it happened. Osiris married Isis and he became the eternal ruler of ancient Egypt. And Seth married Neftis and he crossed to the desert side, to the Deshret, if you still remember that word. And that's why I look to his color is very uh, strong red, but Uzir is green. Because Uzir is our uh, soil, but after the plantation after the green planet, okay? Um, Set, that is why the story says Set was very angry of his brother, jealous, and he killed him. And the story is saying that he killed him twice, the first time he plotted against him and he made like a party, and they made a coffin, a very nice coffin inlaid with jewelry and gold and silver. And he said, who will lay down or lie down in this box or this coffin 
will fit his size, he will take it. Which is very interesting. Like, who would love this kind of gift? Like, someone will give me a coffin as a gift. It's the worst gift ever. But because this is a kind of respect for the afterlife. Because the ancient Egyptians understood that they have a very short first life and very long second life. So that was one of the best gifts in ancient Egypt. Uh, after Uzir was inside, they, because they made the, the size to fit him, they put the lid and they put the nails, or I'm not sure how they covered the, 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 the coffin, and they threw the coffin in the Nile. The Nile current took the coffin to the Mediterranean Sea, and from the Mediterranean Sea it went to the Lebanon coast to Peplus. And this is another interesting story. Peplus was mentioned from the early beginning of ancient Egyptian stories. So Egypt and Lebanon now have very good connection way back from the beginning of the Egyptian history. And the story said that uh, Isis changed herself as a kite. Uh, she was also the, uh, not a good magician. She was the one who invented magic in ancient Egypt. And she managed to take back the body of her husband, dead body, and she became pregnant from him as a dead body. And Seth was hunting in the area. He saw what happened. He had a vision that she will deliver Horus. He will take revenge of him and kill him. So he was so angry, he cut the body of his brother into 42 pieces. Some of you will search that story. You will find that the story is saying 28. So Muhammad is not saying the truth. No, I am. Because other sources saying 14. So what happened? After he cut the body, he threw a piece in each city. So it depends in that the time of the story, because that story written several times. How many cities they had at that time? How many major cities? If they have 18 cities, they say in the story 18 pieces. If they have more or less, according to how many cities they have during the time of the story, they put that number at the pieces of Uzir. Each location received a piece of the body of Uzir. We call it Bu Sir. And the Arabs add A, so it became Abu Sir, which we have now only five Abu Sirs still left in Egypt. And the most famous Abu Sir is the one next to Sakkar. Horus. We just said that Isis delivered Horus, and Horus became the eternal ruler of Egypt after his father. So what happened to his father? He became the eternal ruler of the afterlife. So all the Egyptians, after they die, they go to the court of Osiris. And all the Egyptian kings were ruling Egypt under the power of Horus, and they claim they are the descenders of Horus. And he is wearing the white crown in the middle, surrounded by the uh, red crown, white crown of the south, red crown of the north. So those are now the final picture of the Inyad, the nine netters ended with Horus number 10. So any falcon face, we, cal we shall call it Horus. People who are not aware with uh, the Egyptian art and also the Egyptian writings, because sometimes we can be confused between Isis and Hatur. They are identical. How we know she is Isis or Hatur? We read the, the name. The name is always written. Okay, so if we are aware with the name, how we read ancient Egyptian, we can easily know if she is Isis or Hatur. So now this is not Horus, this is Ra, one of the aspects of the sun. Which sun? The noon, uh, the, uh, the morning sun, before the noon, between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning. This is Khnum, or Khnum, or Ghanam in Arabic language, the ram, or like the, the sheep, and Khnum is the one who creates your ka. What is the ka? We need like long time to explain things like this. The Egyptian believed that there are many aspects of yourself. Okay, the human person is many things, but there are three major parts: body, spirit, or soul, and spirit. Body, soul, spirit. Get body, ba, soul, and ka. Pure body, physical body, spiritual. Uh, aspect and the ka is in between not, com not complete body not complete spirit 
something in between. So it could be what we can call it the ghost, but that ghost is not like in the movies. No, it is your intentions, your consciousness, your desires. Because there are so many things in your body, like feelings from the skin, from the physical uh, body, uh, thoughts from the mind, okay, uh, dreams from the spirit. But there are some things we, we don't know what is the source of it, like feeling guilty, how you feel guilty, w which part of your body uh, makes you feel guilty, okay? You feel uh, pessimistic, optimistic. You ha uh, desires also can be explained as chemical uh, substance in the blood from the brain. But guilty, hope, uh, positive, uh, creative, okay? So that is the consciousness. That is the car. Who creates the car? Knom. And he is always represented sitting on the uh, pottery wheel, creating the car, and the moment the person is being born, he would finish his work. Like, the car and the body would be f created at the same moment. Bitah, the uh, representation of wisdom in ancient Egypt. And if we replace P with F, which makes sense, like when we say photo, we start with P in, in English, right? Or phone. So P is F in most of the cases. So Fattah in Arabic language means the opener or the one who starts everything. Okay? Do you see similarity between him and the Oscar statue? Yeah. Right? Because Bitah is the, the master craftsman. Bitah is also the chief of talent. That's why I believe that who designed Oscar statue had a good, good, no, good knowledge of ancient Egyptian symbols. So he knew that to receive the Oscar, you must be very talented in your uh, business or in your job. So that is Bitah. We come to what we all argue about and some important expressions. Dynastic Egypt, pre-dynastic Egypt, and lost civilization of Egypt, okay? The word dynastic is the word royal family. But why we don't use the word royal family? Because royal family means members of certain family. But the word dynastic means members of certain style or system. Could be one family, could include someone else another ruler came after or before, but he has the same type of religion, the same type of art, the same system of government. So they include him with the same dynasty. So the term dynasty is bigger than royal family. The same like the 18th dynasty. Most of them were one big family, Tutmosis one, two, three, Amenhotep one, two, three, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun. They are one family, but the end of the family or the end of dynasty is Hurum Heb. He has no connection with the family. He was the army leader later. But because he kept the same style, he kept the same system, so he was included as part of the dynasty. Who invented that term or who made the dynasties? Our priest Maniton in the second century BC. So it is not modern uh, Egyptology work. So when we come to dynastic Egypt, so shall we start with 3500 BC? and most of the history books are putting this date as for sure. Or 9,700 BC, the last ice age, the cataclysm of the flood at the uh, end of the last ice age, according to many geologists, including Dr. Robert Schock. Or 36,000 BC. Why 36,000 BC? We have two sources for this number. The first source is uh, Persus from uh, Sumer land, his uh, chronology of the Sumer, Sumerian rulers reaching the number 36,000 years ago, or BC. And Manitoun wrote in his book that he was talking to Ptolemy II, one of the Greek rulers of Egypt, around 250 BC, telling him that the first Egyptian ruler was before you, my king, 36,000 years. That is in his book, the Book of Manitoun, called Egyptica. And Turin Papyrus, King List, in Turin Museum in Italy, it listed uh, four groups of rulers of ancient Egypt. Group number four, humans, like in Gramsci's King Tutankhamun, Akhenaten, Hatshepsut. The third level, we call it 
the Shimsu Hur, the followers of Horus, and the second level called the Demi Gods, okay, half divine, and the first level are the Netters. Only if we go to the third level, Shimsu Hur, it is three, uh, 23,000 years. Imagine that one section only uh, 23,000 years. And the first and the second, we cannot uh, make sure how many years because so many damaged sections. But as an example, uh, Netter Tos or Jahuti, 17,000 years. Other Netters, for 7,000 years. So uh, that number could exceed 36,000 years easily. Okay. So for sure, the dynastic are not 3,500 BC. So I will be conservative and say I may agree more about 9,700 BC. How many dynasties we have? 30. 1, 2, 3, 4 till 30. We include from 1 to 8 or from 1 to 6, we call it Old Kingdom. And 11, 12, Middle Kingdom. And 17 till 20th, New Kingdom. And the 26th and the 30th, this is what we call it late Egyptian time. And it was like quick uh, decline. And in, like during a time of one king or two, some kind of high uh, technology and, and some kind of powers, but then decline. And so many invasions happened to Egypt at that time, 26 to uh, 30 uh, dynasties. That is, was about 500 BC. Egypt was invaded by the Libyans, by the Sudanese. Because during the time of persecutions from priesthood to another priesthood, the Egyptian priests, like the priests of Atom, escaped to Sudan. Uh, priests of Uzir escaped to Libya. They made civilization there, and then they conquered their homeland. But unfortunately, in a wrong way, they claim in academic books that they are the Libyans. No, they are the Egyptians who lived in Libya, the Egyptians who lived in Sudan. And could be the same for Middle East. So after the Sudanese and the Libyans, we were occupied by the Assyrians, by the Babylonians, and by the Persians, and then the Greeks, and then the Romans, and then the Arabs, and then the French, and the Ottomans, and the British. We, we suffered for 2,000 years of occupation. Egypt was invaded uh, between 300 or close to 400 BC till 1952, almost 2,000 years of invasion. Too much, right? Pre-dynastic Egypt. Now this, we come to the best part of the story. So we have dynasties, and we know the story of the dynasties, like all, the, all what you see in movies about the ancient Egyptian kings and style of dress. There was an earlier time, earlier people, we call them pre-dynastic, and they mean primitive people. Pre-dynastic, in this case, very primitive people. They were gathering their food, hunting, uh, lived in caves, or maybe in very uh, simple designs of uh, houses or huts. But why they try to make us believe that it is before 3,500 BC? This is what we call it subliminal message. When I give you a date, I say before, your mind will stuck close to this date. Because I can easily say 9,000 is before 3,500 BC, right? But 3,600 also before, 3,700. So they want us to focus in that time close to 3,500 BC. So you cannot imagine that the pre-dynastic people could be 9,000 BC. And when we say primitive people, it is not us who said that. It is the academic books according to the discoveries they made and according to what we found in their tombs. Most of what we found are very simple design of pottery from clay, from uh, ivory, okay? But some other stuff, we will come to this later. But they admit that there was no any kind of technology, there was no any kind of tools, they were using their hands. And there is some development happened later, and the best development happened during the pre-dynastic time is the pottery wheel. That was the best development. But there was no iron tools, no copper tools, no uh, bronze tools. They were using wood and flint stone and their hands. 
This is a very uh, popular design for ladies. Why ladies? Let me answer this question later. Now, a blade from uh, also uh, pottery. With some that is considered another development during that time because instead of having just plain design, now we have some uh, art. Another piece from clay, which is, in my opinion, very good piece. Now, instead of having drawings only, they start to design the jar itself to look like a bird. They add some kind of legs and uh, make it sophisticated. This is one of the early designs that this jar was baked under the sun, not in an oven. And they add a layer of tar uh, inside to make it smooth. So if they put some kind of liquid instead of water, water would be no problem. But if they put uh, oils, it will not stuck with the, uh, the side of the jar from inside. And will block, how do you call it, uh, those little holes can allow the uh, humidity to go outside. Okay, it's, it's like a kind of, I don't know the word, but as if we have like uh, the cotton fabric, okay, air can go through or some water can go through. So also pottery is like this, but in a very uh, difficult way. It's not like fabric, not easy like fabric. So if you put polluted water on pottery jar, after three nights will be pure. Yeah, like felt. Exactly. So oil will clog that, so they add the tar to avoid doing this. So we are looking to all the designs made by the pre-dynastic people, but you will see that they appreciated in a great way women designs. Okay. More than uh, male designs. Comes from ivory. This jar is very interesting. We will explain it now why we have those dots in red color. And we come to the level that they started to imitate animals, to do copies of animals like hippo, hippos and elephants. Hippos and elephants, if you ask the uh, Egyptologists, they will say, yes, we had hippos in Egypt, but not elephants. The Egyptian environment are not good for elephants, lions, giraffes. But in the ancient Egyptian art, we have them represented in a great way. Also in the Egyptian language, we have words to explain the whole elephant, part of the elephant, the legs of the elephant. Each one means different thing, the same for the lion. And we can see from an early beginning, they represented the elephant. Hippos lived at the uh, uh, far south of Egypt in uh, the Nas uh, what you would call it Lake Nasser now, but it used to be also a lake in the ancient times, but in a smaller scale. Uh, south of Egypt, north of Sudan. But how come they had elephants? So we need, no one yet uh, involved in this subject, so we need a zoologist to tell us when Egypt could, could be a proper environment to have those animals. Because this will also change the timeline to hundreds, maybe of thousands years ago. This is the typical uh, mask for maybe uh, the, uh, the chief of the tribe or the, um, the priest, we are not sure. So when we see those slides, you don't feel any kind of technology, right? Did you have any feeling like this, that any of these things were made by tools? Made by hand, okay. Baked under the sun also. Uh, this is one of the very interesting pieces. I may don't care about anything except the design of triangles. What is this? Are these triangles pyramids or mountains? I call it pyramids. But academics call it mountains. And they say, look, Muhammad, the ancient uh, or the pre dynastic people were looking to the environment and they were imitating the environment. That's why they made hippos and they don't say elephant because they're going to stuck with this statement. And they made gazelles. We have desert gazelles, okay? 
but they forget that I am Egyptian, okay? Because most of those academics are not Egyptians. So when I look to my country, I don't see mountains. And if you visited Egypt, have you seen mountains? Egypt is almost flat ground. We have only one place of mountains, is Sinai, and it is not like this, okay? It is not, uh, how do you call it, pointed summits. No, it's like more like round mountains. And there is a, another possibility far uh, west, south of Egypt, just one high hill. And by the way, we have what we call it in Cairo, El Muqattam Mountain. It's not a mountain, just a hill like maybe 60 meters. But because we don't know mountains, so any high thing, we call it mountain. So we don't have mountains like this in Egypt at all. So this primitive man, when he looked at the environment, he didn't see mountains. He saw pyramids. So he made pyramids. Another one, or maybe the same one, but from another side. And we can see more pyramids underneath. Back to the regular jars of pre-dynastic. Okay, this is what we call it amphora. Uh, if we take this out from the base, we cannot make it stable because it has very pointed, pointed base. So we, they must have a design for it or uh, stab it into the sand. And then they developed a little bit. They found what we call it slate stone or chest stone, um, like limestone but in black color, not uh, hard material, okay, almost soft. And they also made designs of different animals and birds on it. Look carefully to this design, that kind of wavy thing, because we will need it later. Okay. Ah. This is Flinders Petrie schedule. We call it the sequence, uh, the date sequence. Flinders Petrie, he was originally a British engineer, but involved in uh, Egyptology. He did a great job, but he didn't say in clear words that ancient Egypt has so many sophisticated questions. But he left evidences for us, and he left keys for us. This is one of the keys. If you look carefully to what he left, he made the development of the uh, pottery jars. The pottery jars, because we are going to see something else now. This is one of the pottery jars for sure from pre-dynastic, but look carefully, two pyramids in the middle, okay? It's not series of mountains anymore. They are for sure two, mount, two uh, pyramids. The sun on the left side, sunrise, and the one on the other side, the sunset. That's why they made it was mud a little bit, okay? And for sure, this kind of waves, that is not water because the pyramids are not surrounded with water. Okay, this is, could be the energy comes out from the pyramids. So this person from the pre-dynastic time, he witnessed the pyramids. This is the, the table of Petri. Ah, why they made, remember that question? Because they wanted to claim that this jar, which made from limestone, it was made from rose granite. They wanted to change the identity of the stone, to imitate another one made from granite. So as if this is the same powerful jar like this one. Okay, now we come to the big question. What is this? It's a hollow piece of uh, lapis lazuli with, stuck with a piece of gold, hollow piece of gold. And this is also pre-dynastic or it was found in the pre-dynastic tombs. How come the pre-dynastic brought lapis lazuli? It is not an Egyptian material. To get lapis lazuli, if you are in Egypt, you must go to uh, two countries, South Africa or Afghanistan. Afghanistan is closer, but still too far from Egypt, okay? So how come this primitive man, who was like hoping to live the next day, will travel to Afghanistan to bring 